heading to the airport today. I'm gonna go see Mike Munch in Cleveland, Ohio. Well, actually, North Homestead, Ohio. He's an awesome jeweler, jewelry maker, artist, all around cool guy. Does a lot of festivals. I'm gonna hear about his life, what he does, and what he likes to make. Stay tuned. It's only right that these things are still kept alive, you know. Mm -hmm. Tiffany and Company still makes jewelry that way, you know. They'll they'll strike out of dies and saw them out and add gems to them, and you know. It's, but that's the old way of jewelry making, okay. and it's going to the wayside now with you know production casting and with 3D printing. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just killing it, right? You know? I mean, it's it's. You know, what do you, what do you like most about the work? I, I like just creating. The coolest thing is, is I like the history behind the stuff. Right. You know, and, I, and at first I was a little apprehensive about telling people that because they're like, oh, die struck, and they get this, you know, ew, cheap jewelry feel or thought when they hear die struck. And it's funny because it's like, you know, some of you will pay $120, $170 for a die struck piece of, or even cast, pewter. A big gaudy Mjolnir, mm. you know, a, a Thor's hammer, and you'll turn your nose up at a $75 pure silver one. And I always tell people, I says, you're never going to be standing in line and hear, oh, he went to Jared from the lady behind you. <laughs> you know, right. you're going to hear... Where the hell did you get that? Right. And the one lady laughed. She's a uh, what, what I call one of my patrons. She's she spends a lot of money with me. She says I've had compliments from people in the store all the time, and they always go, "Where on Etsy did you find that?" And she laughs and she goes, "This guy doesn't sell on Etsy. This is all handmade, real shit." Mm -hmm. and she goes and she'll tell them, "Look up the Silver Dragon on Facebook." Right. You know, and I get the people who are like, "Oh, that's freaking cool." Right. You know, they're like, that's like even more, I want the piece even more. Right. You know, some people recognize the piece. Some people look and they're like, my grandmother had a piece like that. We don't know what happened to that. I want that. Okay. And I'm like, really? How old, you know, how long? And they're like, oh, this was, and they were this old and she had it. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, that's about right. You know, I'm like, that's, you know, the the design's 125 years old, you know? so it puts it in that time frame, you know, it's like shit, you know, but things like that, it's just, it's interesting, it's cool. How many, how many shows do you do a year? At least 26 weekends. 26 weekends, wow. That's a, that's a, what I did initially, scheduled to do 32 weekends. Okay, wow, well, before yeah, Corona. before everything got shut right. down. Yeah, so, and, and some of those shows didn't open up this year because they were early season shows right they just they just called it they were just right. like no we're not gonna do it you know and, and whatnot and some of them that are later season shows i found other shows to do that overlap so it's like i'm not gonna do that because this is a better show so i mean this year i, I literally i have i didn't count the weeks i mean we got a late start right here you know what i mean my first show that i officially did as far as rent front i do the local flea markets and stuff and that's how i built a local following right sure you know and, and that's a jeweler uh that i talked to in california said that he says never discount or, or thumb your nose at a venue right you know it's a flea market he goes you know where my off where i'm set up he goes at a flea market how, how do you how do you find time from like show to like you know, getting the work done to get out it's of the show. Discipline and balance. <laughs> okay. It is, you know, that's part of the thing, being your own boss, everybody understands it, you know. Right. But most people don't work like, you know, you'll see me, I might be working a site, you know, like a sales the fair group where I right. sell stuff. I might be working that in the morning. Okay, I did something last night or yesterday. I post it on there. People reply, they're interested. I go back and forth, I might write an invoice or two for the piece and, right. and get ready to ship it out. 
and then later that afternoon I might be making a piece and I might be up and I do a live setting stone at like 11 o'clock at night or sure. I might show a finished piece at two in the morning you know right, burning right. midnight oil right. right you know and then you get up at seven or eight or whatever and then start all over and it's whatever needs to be done you know right but doing the shows that's when it gets hectic because it's it's there's a and I'm, it's it's hectic but i'm used to it it's easier custom work is a little more it, custom work is fun i can i can play a little more mm -hmm. but when i make the time doing shows if I get all my work done or I have enough stock to cover things, then I can play. You know, if I'm not traveling on Friday to a show, I, um, you know, if it's a local show, I'm doing last minute packing. Okay. You know, sometimes, uh, oh, Ron, it's a two hour drive. I like to just make the drive down there for a three hour drive mm -hmm. and enjoy a Friday afternoon right. quietly setting up so it's like a lifestyle right? yeah it's it's you know other people don't start getting there till the evening right. Friday evening so I got the whole park to myself go and hit the barbecue at about four or five o'clock right. get some prime rib or smoked turkey right. you know just have a quiet evening because you know what the hell's coming up next is <laughs> like it's the onslaught right and you know but so it's you know it's you, you get set up you get up on on uh, Saturday and get ready for showtime you know right and sure cannon goes off and and here comes the crowd and it's non-stop until what six at night okay. you know running through your lines however many hundred okay. times a day usually by Sunday afternoon we have what we call Sunday break so mm -hmm. you start flubbing your lines okay <laughs> so, and people laugh and a lot of people understand they're like oh you guys have had a hell of a weekend because We've talked to a couple vendors who started their lines and just like flubbed them up or just stopped in mid sentence and started laughing and were like, I forgot my lines, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know? And it's usually one of those those weekends that we have. You know, you have 32,000 people. So like, holy cow, you know? It's like you don't realize it because you're stationary and you're seeing the people flow by, you know? But when you get to certain areas where you can look down the main lane, mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, it's like herding cattle. Sure. It's shoulder and shoulder. You're right, like, right. You know, my helpers get this look of panic. They're like, That's too many people, too many people. I'm like, just think of the money. Right. Just think of the money, you know? Like, if you need to take a break, just go behind the tent. The tent. That's done with the liver of sulfur. Basically, if you, same thing that comes off of eggs. Okay. <laughs> but it's in a gel form. And we use it to, to put a color on the, on the metals. But, um... I mean, it, it, Sterling doesn't really, Sterling doesn't do that, um, per se. You can turn it black, mm -hmm. but not, like, get them really cool colors and stuff. I just, that's what I, I, I started working with copper, so I okay. was used to something that was soft. And I moved to brass, which is hard. A lot, right. a lot of people who are like, oh, man, selling brass sucks. And I was like, I saw brass until I got really proficient at it. Right. And then I started to try the more challenging stuff um, on sterling and fine silver. And it was just, you know, so much easier. Right. Uh, okay. That was one of the things that I, you know, actually that's one of the things as far as like things that I do in, in my work. I love sawing. It's, okay. It is like my zen place. I love to just sit down late at night when it's quiet and just saw parts. You know, because uh -huh. when we're pressing the pieces, the pieces are, you know... I would take, you know, I mean, I'll, I'll pour my own ingots of fine silver or sterling, and then I'll roll them out to the appropriate thickness, and I put them in dyes, and when they're finished and I get everything, the good impression on them, mm -hmm. then it's all cut out. It's all sawed out by hand. I mean, I can show you here later on it. Okay. At my bench pin, but it's a jeweler saw. Nice. And it's all hand cut, and then it's finished with, with files and, mm -hmm. and uh, sandpaper and, and a buffer and stuff like that. I'll put a, I'll solder a bail on it mm -hmm. if need be or whatever the design is. Rings, same thing. The rings are, are, you know, made out of sterling. All my rings are sterling. Okay. Um, but they'll be made in a die, and then they're cut to size, uh, formed. Uh -huh. Actually formed, then form the shape then cut the size and then solder and then if a stone is set in it like that mm -hmm. 
nice. I set the I make the bezel that holds the stone. That's all custom handmade by me. Nice. So I mean they're they're hand fabricated. You know. Yeah, I love your work. Yeah. Thank you. There's I appreciate quite a lot it. Of, quite a lot of volume of it. You know, well, you, have a, you do a lot of different things. That's yeah. the thing that that I worried about at the beginning. It was like, what? How many designs is enough? And I thought, well, there's never enough. Right. You, if you do that, you get stagnant. Like the people you see at the shows, and you walk in there, and you're like, is that anything new this year? And they're like, and they give you that look, like. No, same old stuff. And you're like, mix it up, man. Gotta right. come up, at least come up with something new every other year or something. Sure. I'm coming up with new pieces every year, but I'm working with dyes. And a lot of these people, that all it's all cast stuff, too. Okay. You know, cast or, or dye struck. And it's the, you know, I don't really consider them competition at the fairs, mm -hmm. you know, because they're not the same. The people who buy the pewter jewelry or the silver plated stuff, they're, they're not, I'm not going to get them to buy my stuff. Right. They're right. into cheap jewelry. Right. You know, I do craft shows or I do, you know, the flea market and when the, you know, paparazzi jewelry, dare I say right. that word, come out of my mouth, did I say that? When they're there, you see the ladies flocking there for the cheap jewelry and the beads are rolling across the floor because the crap breaks, you right, know, sure. and they're handling it. And, you know, some of them walk by and look at the stuff and they're impressed and some ladies know... They're like, yeah, if I want something like really nice, I'll they buy the stuff. But they're like, oh, it's I just buy junk jewelry. They don't care, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm like, but you know, we spent thirty-five dollars over there, and this is like forty dollars. Right. Oh, you know, and some of them do. They're like, I didn't realize that it was that affordable. It's like if you didn't look, you didn't last. Right. You know, it depends on what you want. I mean, I have things from twenty dollars on and up. Right. You, know, you were talking earlier. You asked me earlier about you know the area. Mm -hmm. Is it a tough sell? Certain things people buy and, and don't have a problem with the price. It's rings. I I jokingly call myself Lord of the Ring. Okay. And you know because I like to make rings in the beginning. It was like it was one of the things that scared me. Just like sawing. Right. I was scared crapless to saw. I was like I just don't want to have a piece that's this close to being completed and screwed up because I saw it. I just yeah. And someone says, keep sawing. Just saw, saw, screw stuff up, break blades, mm. saw until you're comfortable and proficient. And one day maybe you'll even like it. It is one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, you know, it's great. Yeah. It's, but, you know, uh, it's just... It's like that chaos moment, right? You're like... You can that's right now. So many different things yeah. to talk about. And, yeah. and, you know, yeah, I, I never thought about some of the stuff. What do you like about it? You know, I'm like, I like everything. But that's one of my favorite things to do because it's... It's just one of those moments where you take something from that point and it's like you, you know, it's come so far. Right. You know, and you know that it's it's really close to being finished and it's just, it's it's, it's neat, you know. Then it's a challenge too, you know, because I'm always picking different designs that are, that challenge my sawing abilities. And, you know, it's, it's, it's to the point now where I'm just like, I look for stuff. That's like, okay. you know, other people be like, oh, that's going to be a pain in the ass. Why would you want to do that? I'm like, why wouldn't you want to do that? Mm -hmm. And they look at me and like, are you sadistic? And I'm like, maybe, you know, but the sense of satisfaction when you finish something like that. Like I do the trees of life mm -hmm. and I'll saw them out and it looks like filigree between the leaves and right. the branches. And it's all sawed out. And how, does a, how long does a piece like that take? And that's funny because I was going to, I get that from people when they look sure. at it and they're like, it's $150, like how long did that take you to make? And it I'm doesn't like, even really matter. What you're, yeah, no, but yeah. in the beginning, literally, the first one I cut, I to, it, it took me the better part of a day sure. and a half. It's experience, right? Yep. Right. And now I can sit down and do one in probably about an hour. Okay. Wow. About an hour, 20 minutes. Maybe. Okay. You know, and it's and, and that's the thing. People ask me, and I'm just, I know when they're asking, and it's like they're curious. And I know when they're asking because they're questioning the price compared to that. And I, I look at them and I says, "You're not paying me for how long it took me to make that piece. You're paying me for how long it took me to make that to learn how to make that piece in that right. amount of time. Right. You're paying for the blood, the sweat, the skin <laughs> that I'm missing because I drilled my finger last night making the piece. Ouch. Tears." <laughs> swear words you know the texas was cool because these there was a lot of 
vendors mm -hmm. that were buy fellow vendors that were buying stuff for me, and I had no idea they were vendors. And they're like, hey, you need to come down and do, you know, Scarborough. And, you know, your stuff would sell so good down there. We're vendors, we do this down there. You need to come. And I'm like, oh, oh. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, Cause I really appreciate it because this opened things up. And, and, and then it was like, all oh, once it traveled from there to California. And lately now it's just a bunch of people from California buying stuff. Yeah, sort of also but it's made the, LA. It's, it's made fun. The, yeah, it's the made circuit. the full circle now. Yep. So now it's back to like Ohio, PA, Virginia people, you know, and, and but it you know, it's the same thing. It's like, you know, I had pieces going all over the state, you know. Yeah, people, even people in Canada. I had to yeah, people pick yeah, up. Yeah, my piece going to Germany, right? So it's all <laughs> that's you're even selling international. That's the same thing. You know, some people get it, some of them don't. You know? Right. And the people that don't, they're the jewelry is just too expensive for them anyway. They don't want it. It's, and those are my those are my clients, and I don't worry about it. You know, I meet people at the fair that are all like, they walk back by, by my booth and vendors, and they're looking. I'm like, come on out and talk. I'm like, I'm not selling the same stuff you do. Right. You, you got different clients than I do, man. We're not competing with each other. Right. You know? A couple of them come up and talk to me and realize they're like, wow. Okay, yeah, no, this is like totally different than me. Yeah, you know, <laughs> this is like, you know, and they become friends, you know, and, and they're like, we sell jewelry. And it's like, no, he sells different jewelry, you know. And then I've had a couple of them like, oh, no, no, you're looking for sterling chains, go up to the front gate and talk to the guy at Silver Dragon. He's got he's got silver chains there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, thank you, I appreciate it. You That's know? terrific, yeah. And I'm like, I do the same thing. People come in and like, I'm looking for ear cuffs. I'm like, don't make them, but go and look at, you know, ear art. They have them, whatever you want. You know? Right. And I'm like, thanks, we appreciate it. No problem. Yeah. <laughs>